Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Red Room meeting from the Board of Trustees, Smith Vocational Agricultural High School. Today is Tuesday, July 18th, and I'd like to ask for a call to order. Mr. Kaling? Present. Dr. Spencer Robinson? Here. Mr. Quadro? Present. Dr. Bonner? Present. Mayor, Ab Mayor is absent today. Mission statement, Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School is to prepare students for social responsibility, employment, and post-secondary education through rigorous applied technical and academic programs. Thank you. Is there any participation by the public? Does not appear to be. Participation by the trustees. Yeah. Um, we've had two Collaborative for Educational Services board meetings since our last trustees meeting. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't a quorum at our June 28th meeting, which is required for any votes, so we held a virtual meeting on July 10th. We did have a quorum for that one, so we were able to approve the fiscal year 24 budget. Also at that meeting, I was elected vice chair of the board um, just until our reorganization meeting in September. Um, this is not directly related to my role as a trustee, but I wanted to share that last week I presented with Dr. John Provost at the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents Executive Institute on the labor management collaboration work we did in the Northampton Public Schools. I appreciated having Dr. Lincolnhoker in our session, and Dr. Provost told me that reconnecting with Dr. Lincolnhoker was a great <coughs> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Quadro, anything? Uh, sure. Um, today, earlier today, we had our uh, our building committee meeting. A lot of, uh, we're in the schematic design phase, so some schematic designs were presented, uh, mainly uh, five options. And I think the group has decided to eliminate at least two of the options, the B options. And there's some uh, good discussion, good thoughts thrown out, and uh, a good start to our future building that we hope to break ground in spring of 2024. That's all I got for today. Thank you. I'd like to just uh, thank everybody for, uh, I was not here just for your information for graduation. Uh, my granddaughter graduated down in South Carolina, so I went down to attend that event. And I want to thank everybody. I heard it went well. I heard everything worked out great. And Julie, I want to thank you. I had a great time. And, uh, but it's the first one I've missed in 13 years. So. <laughs> but uh, uh, we had a great time down there. It was like an Irish wedding going on for days. So the celebration was fantastic. So, but thanks, everybody, for that. Uh, this time I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the June 13th, 2023 Board of Trustees meeting. So, so moved. Oh, second. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Good evening, everybody. So relatively short before uh, this stage of the agenda. Uh, just a few updates from our last board meeting uh, on June 19th. We celebrated Juneteenth, so that was a, a non-school day uh, here. Then the following day was our final uh, day of school. Uh, but then, uh, as Mr. Ricardo was saying, uh, with the building committee, we met just prior to this particular meeting. But SMMA, which is our design services firm, architecture firm uh, based out of uh, Cambridge, uh, but their particular project manager is actually local. Uh, she lives in South Hadley, 
and his son attends uh, Smith and actually in the horticultural program. So I'll talk about the cycle of life. Uh, we had our first sort of uh, kickoff event with SMMA on the final day of school. Uh, they came out and, and they met with various administrators, uh, various personnel, uh, including uh, the director of security, director of technology, to get their, their perspective on uh, aspects of the building that we should be uh, accounting for. But then my highlight of this particular site visit that particular day was uh, Mr. Osbach and Mr. Nevin sent over a handful of students. And the students were able to give a lot of feedback from their perspective on the initial design, conceptual design of the building. Uh, again, I, I shared earlier today, by far the best stakeholder group I was uh, participating in. They were very upfront, very honest, uh, down to earth, logical, practical. Uh, one example and we talked about it earlier today, uh, this, the concept is the current horticultural building will come down and that will become sort of that space will become a focal point, almost like a roundabout rotary area to direct traffic. And the new building will be down back uh, next to the animal science building, sort of up against the football field, uh, just to kind of give you a visual. And the architects initially, during their bid process to get the job, uh, they were looking at this focal point, the, the old horticulture building. Uh, as a draw to bring the, the community down there. You know, one concept that they had, one idea that they had, was an outdoor climbing structure. A very artistic, it looked like a, like a, I don't know, a statue or a monument of some sort that the students uh, could climb up. Uh, the students, their first feedback was, don't waste your time. Uh, we don't want that, we don't need that, it's a waste of money. Uh, if we're gonna be climbing outdoors, give us a tree. Don't give us this, this art structure. Uh, if they're going to be forced to climb indoors, then we'll have a climbing structure inside the building, but uh, don't waste the space. So, again, very practical. You don't hear that, I don't believe, you don't hear that too often from the teenagers uh, and other schools. But uh, having their feedback was, was invaluable. And then they were able to, to check out the site, the, the current building, and uh, get a lot of feedback from both Mr. Nevin and Mr. Onstock. Uh, so that was the kickoff on the 20th, uh, as we were also coming up on the final day of school. Uh, Yes, I'm sorry. The last day of school was the following day, the 21st. Uh, and then uh, June 27th, we had our first progress meeting with SMMA. And these progress meetings are happening on Tuesdays, weekly, uh, via Zoom. And it's a chance for uh, the architecture firm to kind of give us some updates. And that particular meeting on the 27th, they had four options. And those options were uh, as a result of that kickoff event. And I applaud SMMA. Uh, their ability to receive feedback from the various stakeholders and take that feedback and immediately have a revised concept has been very, very impressive. Uh, so that was sort of that first progress meeting. I actually took some of those ideas and brought them back to the admin team um, and a couple ideas that we, we worked through. Uh, one concept was uh, the location of the office. So the architect was <coughs> looking at the office sort of being embedded within the classrooms, the related classrooms. And based on the feedback, we thought it'd be more practical to have the office more embedded inside the shops. Because where the students are most of the day are within the shops, not in the classrooms. And if you walk around campus, most of the vocational programs that we have here, the teacher office is more embedded in the shop and not related. So that was immediate feedback that we took. Is a question? Yeah. Um, who represents the school at the parks? So it's myself, uh, Crystal, Tim, Joe, So that was, is it Mark or James on that? Typically not. Uh, so we have, so we follow that, the information. So as an example, today you heard about the, the need for the equipment list. So they're working on that, helping us out with that. Um, that week, uh, we went down to uh, Connecting for Success, which is at Acid Regional Book Tech in Middleborough. It's sort of the, the end of the year. Uh, it's a big conference put on by MAVA. And uh, it's not only for administrators, but also teachers. So we have about eight or nine uh, uh, teachers and administrators down there uh, for the couple days. Uh, my highlight was it was my chance to sort of step away from the presidency of MAMA. That was my final official duty. So now I am uh, the past president, which is uh, much better. Uh, so but anyways, the conference itself was very nice. Uh, a couple of good keynotes. Uh, the, the big takeaway I had uh, as far as a, break, a breakout session I attended was this year's ASP, uh, uh, ACTE president, the national president, he is a school counselor and CTE director down in uh, a small community down in, in, in uh, Georgia. 
So he visited, and his his presentation was all about marketing their programs. And I'm not sure what his, his background is, but you can tell he's he's a marketer uh, by trade. And how he sells his CTE programs to the community, the larger community outside the school, uh, was really noteworthy. So uh, some good ideas I took away from that particular breakout session. Then uh, we had a, the Fourth of July weekend. Campus was closed on the fourth. We had another SMMA progress meeting. Uh, again, so just revising. The, the, the design. <clears throat> so that occurred on the 11th, which was also the first day of the MASS conference, uh, as Dr. Spencer Robinson mentioned. So I was on the SMMA progress meeting at the, you know, at the conference last week. The MASS conference was outstanding as usual. It was my second one. I uh, went last year as well. The keynotes were top notch. Uh, the, the Secretary of, Educa of Education was there, uh, Secretary Tutwiler. Uh, so he spoke. And he was facilitating a discussion with Project 351. Uh, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with Project 351. Uh, it's been in existence now for probably about a dozen years. Uh, the concept is 351 represents the 351 communities in the Commonwealth. And the goal is to have representatives from each of the communities uh, participate in Project 351. So your students from all over the Commonwealth. And their target is around equity, diversity, uh, acceptance. Uh, Voices for All, uh, Community Service. They do a lot of work around 9-11 every fall. Uh, so so what happened was Secretary Tuckweiler had obviously his great intro, uh, sort of his comments from the state level. And then he facilitated this, the discussion with some speakers from Project 351, so a diverse panel of students. And again, getting that student perspective on things and some of the recommendations were unbelievable. Uh, one example was uh, there's a young lady, uh, she was in a wheelchair, and the secretary asked, I think it was four students. So if you had a magic wand, if you were the secretary of, of education, if you had the power, what's one thing you would implement statewide? And this young lady, uh, she said, I would ensure that playgrounds at the elementary level were accessible for all. And, okay, and but then she expanded on it. She talked about, uh, if our goal as the adults is to make uh, the future generation work well together, uh, where do those interpersonal relationships start? They start on the playground at the elementary schools. And if you're going to automatically exclude a certain demographic uh, who can't play in the playground, then how do you expect those students to learn the, the skills that drive other people? Uh, simple, but fascinating. So anyways, uh, it was a great keynote. The following day, we had a keynote from uh, Michael Bonner. Uh, he's a, a teacher down in Georgia. Uh, he, was, he played Division I college basketball. Uh, he is now famous. He's basically a, a big presenter. Uh, by far the best you know, energy level that I've ever seen. And I told Joe Bianco when I came back, I said, if we had a faculty of Michael Bonner's, we'd all be out of, out of business. Uh, he was unbelievable. Uh, so if you have a chance to see him, uh, look him up. Uh, so those are the big key, uh, takeaways from the MASS conference. We had a, another <coughs> progress meeting this morning with SMMA. Uh, this morning's meeting was more focused on site placement. Where would this building go? Uh, some great discussion. And then as uh, Mr. Quadro said, we had our official building committee meeting this afternoon. So some pictures from uh, the, the conferences I just mentioned. Uh, the lower right-hand corner, uh, that was the ACT uh, president who spoke. And then the other three were from last week uh, down at the Cape. So the upper left-hand corner, uh, that's Secretary Tutwiler speaking at the podium, and then uh, the four students that were speaking. And then uh, the lower left-hand corner, uh, that's Michael Bonner uh, putting his suit coat on uh, to begin his speech, and then so that was his cover picture uh, and, and contact information. So again, highly recommend if you need to have energy and motivation, uh, a new way of thinking for education and teaching and learning, uh, he's a great resource. This is a very similar slide from last month. I they won't really get into the weeds, uh, but yes, we already have our design services uh, team. That's SMMA. Uh, we met for, uh, about an hour ago again as a building committee. The budget is still a concern for me, honestly. Uh, we are realizing that the feasibility study that was finished back in January, uh, some of the financials and some of the projections uh, didn't include everything. Uh, so we're, we're finding that out. So that 7.4 million that was sort of highlighted in the feasibility study may not be an accurate number, uh, which does concern. A, a positive is that the design that we're looking at uh, currently is a more simplified design than what we were looking at during the feasibility study. So because it's a more simplified design, 
hopefully some of the construction costs may go down. Uh, but on the flip side, because of the site location that we're looking at, there might be an increased cost of site preparation. So uh, we'll see. Uh, SMMA was hoping that we'll have some early estimates uh, early fall, September, October. Probably have some costs coming back from the estimators. So more to come. Uh, but again, back to finances. I am worried about the finances. We are currently looking at just north of six million dollars that we have received through grants and insurance and so on and so forth. We know that. Uh, so anything above and beyond that six million, uh, we need to find. And I would not be shocked if we see a, a, a total construction cost of around eight million. Uh, I would not be shocked by that. So as a board, how do we close that gap of approximately two million dollars? Uh, that's going to be our, our charge over the next couple months. No other way around it. And as Mr. Quadro said, hopefully we break ground this coming spring. The goal again is to complete the project in March of 25, and then the students can move in for the fall of the 25-26 school year. <coughs> Donations this, uh, this past month, we have received 67 cases of disposable gloves for culinary uh, by David Devine, uh, related to Lauren Devine and Guttis. Uh, and he works over at uh, Massachusetts Precision Coding. So thank you to David for that. Wonderful donation, definitely helps. In the news, I know you can't read this. Uh, this was a, a recent article in the Gazette, uh, but Dewey Hathaway, uh, I, I may have mentioned this a few months ago, he was going to Ireland for the World's Archery Competition. He has now come back as a gold medalist. Uh, so he won, I think, three golds, I believe. Uh, as two, two golds, thank you. Uh, individual gold, there was a team gold, um, and then there was a team bronze. So congratulations. It's amazing what our students do outside of school. So looking ahead, I know in the summer, the list is rel relatively short, but if you have a chance to walk around campus, and if you listen to Tim, this is not a quiet summer. Like, there's so much going on around campus this summer. I'm not sure how Tim's still standing up right. Uh, so with that said, uh, Thursday, uh, next door, Cooley Dickinson, there's a groundbreaking ceremony. I'm not sure if the board is aware of that we are offering a parking lot for the VIPs to park so there may be some traffic on campus just want to let the board know that uh, next Tuesday I am planning the annual administrative retreat uh, we're going to try to be off campus to have a chance to again plan and build uh, for, for the coming year as you know we have a new administrator on, on our team uh, with our second assistant principal uh, Joshua Clark so I, I really feel it's important this summer to, to really rebuild that team, to make sure Josh feels as part of the team uh, so we can hit the ground running for day one. So uh, that's happening next Tuesday. Most likely we'll have to reschedule our SMMA meeting next week because it happens to be Tuesday as well, but we'll definitely be planning on meeting uh, with them on August 1st. August 2nd and 3rd, uh, we have the uh, MAVA planning retreat down at Devons. Uh, that's the annual uh, opportunity for the superintendents and other administrators and models to come together and talk about the upcoming year. Uh, we do have Secretary Tubweiler planning to, to, to come and speak to us on uh, Wednesday and on Thursday morning the commissioner and his team uh, will typically come and do a presentation <coughs> on a desk. So that's model. And again, more progress meetings with M SMMA. We have the building committee on the 15th and then the board of trustees also on the 15th. I know it's tentative, but most likely we're probably going to want to talking about the upcoming school year next month. And that's my report. Well, it's really short. Okay. So unfortunately, with the summer, there's family commitments, and Joey had a family commitment, so that's why he's not here this evening. But in front of you, you should have his one-page report. I'll just quickly highlight uh, and any questions I probably can answer. Uh, so again, he highlights the uh, Connecting for Success Conference. Uh, he also attended that. That's his first bullet. He also outlines the various mailings that happen every summer and the dates, just so as a board you'll know. So if you hear, have any feedback from community members, you'll, you'll see when the, the major mailings is going out in the summer. The enrollment update. So as of, uh, the, of today, our overall enrollment for this uh, should be this coming year. 578, 461 of tuitions. Incoming freshmen, we have 147 registered. 27 of them are from Northampton, so that's about 18.4% of the incoming freshmen. 
and we are still actively sending out notices to students on the wait list. So again, our goal is to get 150. Uh, so as you know, the process, we sent out uh, acceptances to the first 150 based on the, the admissions policy. As students on, on, who receive that first round, when they decide to not come to Smith, they, they just rather stay in the home district or make other choices. We then continue to send out acceptances down the list. We have now have one voice out and hopefully we'll be full when it comes to the first day of school. On the personnel side, we are down to a finalist for our uh, position. Uh, that was resignation. And then health, the health assistant has been hired, um, which is great. So with that said, that was Joe's report. Any questions? The 18.4% um, from Northampton, that's a little bit low. Right? It is. It's about, is that your lack of access to um, the district or no, I, interest from other communities or I think it's less of an access issue. I, JFK has pulled back over the recent years. I'm not going to say they opened the doors totally, uh, but they are a school that we're able to get into and, and talk to the students. So that's that not an issue. Uh, why it's lower, I think is just the overall student pool would be my my guess. We do offer, part of the admissions policy, we do offer the first 30 slots to North Hampton students. Mm -hmm. So they're sort of earmarked and prioritized. Mm -hmm. uh, but then overall, they, the rest fall into the larger pool. Mm -hmm. So I, I really can't comment on why it's like It's definitely not an access concern. Thank you. And Crystal, do you want to speak up to start with you? Yeah, Tim, do you want to? Just give you some updates on some of the projects. <coughs> so the Capital skills grant they got for culinary is in, is well underway. They have installed their walk two walk-in coolers in the freezer. Uh, they're in the midst of putting the new hoods on that you see laying off off the ground. Um, they're going to get new ceilings and light fixtures in the, in the kitchen. So it looks like a bomb blew up in there, but hopefully we get it all back together before school starts. Um, the apple storage across from Animal Science. Uh, they, they plan on being off-site in three weeks. There's some more sill work, they brought a sill they got to replace that they found. Um, and there were some boards up in the, up inside the floorboards that I asked them to remove too. Uh, so it shouldn't be a huge amount of change order. Um, companion handling building, we have the frost walls in, I'm waiting for the uh, plumber to show up to put the sewer lines in, in the slabs so we can get that going. We have a bunch of material, building material already bought and purchased inside the barn. Um, we started working on the MS classroom. It went from a classroom to a pocket pet lab. So um, <coughs> put some lights in there, paint the ceiling, and put some uh, RFP board, the plastic, the fiberglass board on the walls so it's all washable and easy to maintain. We'll put the epoxy floor in there. Slow down a second. Yep. Um, the new building, there would be a uh, companion animal building. You got the Ross walls in. Yep. You're waiting for the plumber. Who's the plumber? Uh, Scott Cernak. So uh, Western Mass. Yep. Okay. Um, you made a comment. You bought a bunch of material. Yep. So we're using framing material. Framing material, um, zip wall um, systems for the roof and the um, siding. We've got the roof is here, metal roof and metal siding on its way. Trusses should be here next week. Where are the trusses coming from? Kinetic, uh, trust manufacturing out of Connecticut. They had a two-week turnaround. Wow. I, know. I, don't, I don't know why. It was also <laughs> six weeks. I don't know. Um, so do you still anticipate getting that shell erected? I'm, I'm hoping so. Yeah, that's my... Today I am. If we Today get, is your hope. Yeah. If we get that floor in, it's not that big of a deal. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and, and who's your crew? You, Giles, and Rennie, Rennie, um, Bobby, and we'll use Keith, one of the other guys. Yeah. That you'll be able to commit the time to that with all the other things you got going on. We will. We'll figure it out somehow. Okay. It'll all work out. It always works out. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Yeah. Um, so in the classroom, we went a little bit further. We took some, uh, putting in a new sink and some of the electrical was messed up. So we took that off and then found that the insulation was pretty poor. So we're going to strip the outside of the building and put some spray foam in there and 
really seal it up because there wasn't anything. Excuse me again, where is this? At so the EMS? A, yeah, the classroom. Okay. The, the framing on there is the same as the barn. They're like two foot or three foot on the center of the uh, two by sixes. So. And there was just barn boards that were overlapping each other forever, exterior siding. So to, to seal it up, we'll put spray foam in there and then sit boards on it and make it simpler. Because we took two heaters out of there, we're just going to use the electric heater uh, mini split. Um, C buildings air conditioning system, they're well in, into it. They, they're putting up a bunch of the cassettes in all the classrooms and offices. Uh, and that's they, what BG is here for? Yep, yep. They got the contract for that. They still plan on being out of here and having that system run by the end of the second week of August. So, hopefully, everything works out and teachers come back. I don't know how the guys are working there right now. It's so hot and humid in there. Um, <laughs> but, um, so we're working on the auto body classroom. Um, had new lights installed, dimmable LEDs. Um, I put new ceiling tiles in, uh, but we can't do the asbestos abatement until the summer camp's out, and that will be out the last Thursday of this month. And then Encompass, Compass will be here the next Monday and do that. Take the floor tiles out, and then we'll put the epoxy um, on the floor in and put the ceiling back together. <clears throat> that stormwater work outside. Um, I haven't gone over. They've got a city engineer that walks over there every day. And then there's a city guy. You see a, someone sitting in a lawn chair under the tree. That's their city David guy. I thought it was you. Uh, he oversees Dave. If you walk up and ask a question, he runs right up and finds it. But they've, they've made the connection to the, to the uh, pasture. You can see that 24 inch pipe sticking out. I saw the reduction. And they've got a new, uh, a new diversion. Uh, cylinder in our front lawn, and they're making a connection to the old storm drain and off in the road. So, um, there's something here I can't read it. What? More to follow. Swipe card. Oh yeah, swipe card. Yeah, swipe card system is well underway too. They pretty much wired almost everything. I think they're going to make the final connections. But they've been here pretty steady. Sidewalks? Sidewalk, I had to re bid just B building. Um, as much as I tried to make it main bid, alternate bid, alternate bid, alternate bid, Will said that I phrased how I was going to pick it by, I said, like the sum of the base bid or the sum of the bid was going to be the low bid, but I thought I could just jerk it. No. no, in public bidding, you get it to come in order. Well, I think we've done it this way. We did it this way with Joe before. But anyway, so nobody could, the A building was out of, we can't afford to do A building right now. So we're going to try to do B building. We may be done during school, but I think B building is easier to divert the kids around when they fix it. So that actually goes, it's um, being advertised starting tomorrow. So where's the status of the uh, Oliver Restaurant patio? That, that will come as soon as you can fund the big, the big A building. So I don't know we had that wrapped into this project. That was, we got to be doing an A building. But oh, okay. So okay. It, one of the main parts of doing A building was to make the ADA compliant. So we were going to put ramps. That's the All right. You got to get rid of the side, uh, asphalt that is on a slope on each side. So it just came out way, way more expensive than where we thought. Oh, one question. Yep. Um, the air conditioning in C building uh, that will have such an impact on the learning conditions for students yep. is so much appreciated. It will just make a world of difference. So that's just one part of it, right? So next year we got to go on. We got part of the money to put the uh, integrate that with our building systems. So right now you have a UV system in your uh, in the classroom, right? The, um, and then you put in you put in a separate heat and cooling system that are going to compete with each other. So you've got to integrate the two, get rid of the nomadic controls, and go digital. So the city gave us money this year to start that process. So. Wow, that's very much appreciated. Um, and uh, I was on campus with my son, older son and daughter-in-law last yeah. week, and it was um, really exciting to walk walk 
around the campus and see how active it was. Yeah. The stuff was happening everywhere. Um, very cool. So I, as you're talking, I can picture what, what was being done. Um, we got to go into culinary arts and because um, the League of Women Voters were here and Chef Lacey also happened to be here too. Um, amazing. Like that, it's, I didn't, I wasn't picturing that it would be torn apart to the right. extent that it, it's like totally torn apart. I didn't realize they were going to take down the old ductwork that you so uh, like because yeah. you, know, you put it in 46 years later, you have you put new conduits all underneath yeah. it, all that had to get moved. Wow. Um, wow. So it's a lot of work. It's, it's going to be really impressive. Nice yeah, it will be nice when it's done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, for the uh, ops, what is the timeline for that? And do you know what, once they're installed, what steps have to happen next? Like obviously the students and So that's all in there. And their ID cards, correct. And then it would just be programming. Yeah. So I think it's supposed to be up and ready for the school. Like this. For in all of the buildings. Yep. Our campus is going to be secure. As long as everyone follows the rules. Oh, that's so awesome. Rules. It's awesome. <laughs> so who will be in charge? That's going to be someone's responsibility. Josh. Okay. The IT guy. That's some work and some, yeah, issuing the cards. Buying and the different job categories. Yeah. What access we want the different job yeah. categories. Yeah. Right. Okay. And managing it all. Correct. And uh, issuing new students so coming. Part of it is. We're going to have to. Um, with part of it, you receive one printer, mm -hmm. but we request two printers. One for the business office for any new employees, yeah. or any create any graphics will have the other printer for students. Awesome. Thank okay. you. So Excellent. the other last thing we're doing, we're changing a uh, closet in the gym. Is the athletics director's office. Right. So we kicked out all the right stuff is in the back hallway. Where's that going to live? Kind of live? We'll have to come up with a plan. Okay. Uh, some of the stuff I can't move, they've got those small hoops for the uh, little kids, little but kids they're, they're too tall to move in and out. But I would think they could just live in that back hallway and then we find another spot for their walls. But um, right. we, we cut, the, cut the wall, put the two doors in. So oh, that's um, hope to have that done before okay. September. Amazing. Hold on. Refresh my memory about the Culinary Capital Skills Grant project. You got hoods, new ovens, walking cooler, walking cooler. Those are amazing. All digital. Yep. Incredible. Those are the three main components: hoods, ovens, walking cooler. Yeah, you know, we did the, um, the floor over in the restaurant over last December. That was part. Of, that was a part of our income spending. And then don't we have a hood for the cafeteria somewhere? That's through the city. In the loop? And when's that going to happen? So that's the same problem that happened over there as when I stood there with the guy from the hood company. He said, we're going to give you a new hood. And he points at the hood. But he's not pointing at the electrical controls on the bottom. You would think it's one piece, and it's not. So they redid the quote. And it's gone up. It's gone up just on the price of the equipment from last December. But now you add the new electrical part, so um, I don't have the breakdown with me. But I'm more interested in timeline. Well, that would be something. If we did it, I, we, we can't do it this summer. We can't yeah, be, and the guy said they can't do it in a week, so it have to be. We could buy the equipment, store it, and then do it next summer. Uh, can you do it during a break? It's not it's practical. Good. Walk in there and take a look. It's, yeah, it's not. Yeah. And, and then just the anxiety of the. the Cafeteria manager would be on the <laughs> 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 Totally legitimate. It absolutely is. <laughs> One other tidbit, uh, just for the board's perspective, uh, you probably noticed the, the Red Cross trailers out front. Mm -hmm. I just wanted the board to be fully aware of what was happening and not happening in reality. So, with all the rain and the flooding that was happening, we are a regional shelter. So, I think it was last Monday the fire chief uh, reached out to Ted and myself. And, uh, there was some flooding, as I saw in the media, flooding up in Williamsburg. Uh, there were some evacuations that were occurring there. We were trying to bring them, initially the, the thought was, bring them here to the shelter. Uh, during that conversation, uh, the fire chief met with the mayor. They agreed to open up the senior center. So the evacuations went to the senior center at that point. And then it's still raining. So Tim was contacted late last week. Uh, so you see the trailers out there. We are actively not open as a shelter. We don't have anybody here yet, but we're on standby in case this rain just continues to go. So just so the board knows if you have any questions. Yes,
All right, I do. Now that you brought that up, I have a question about the food truck. Is that out there just for display to kind of gain attention from people driving? It's by? always out there for marketing, but we, uh, because the kitchen is torn apart, and we have the summer enrichment program, so we have middle school students on campus for the culinary program. So Chef Lazy has been very creative, uh, trying to use the kitchen, but also using his related, and also using the food truck as oh, a, a great experience. So it's working out. Oh, so registration has been dropped off at the registry. We're waiting for a call back to pick it up so we can use the plates on it and ensure it. So is this really the first use of the food truck? Yeah. Great. We got to go inside that also, and Roscoe said the line in the food truck is the same size as the line in the slow diner. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to finance. Sure. So um, my office is currently in the process of Closing out FY23, <coughs> FY24, um, the attached um, reports are not final reports. Um, the final reports will come once the city auditors have rolled, um, have completed the year-end close, which is approximately September 12th. In this packet, you'll see a list of accounts payable invoices from FY23. All of the um, accounts payable invoices had to be down to the city auditors by July 6th. That turnaround, unfortunately, is not enough time for vendors to get invoices to us. So, unfortunately, we probably the next meeting as well. We'll have a list of invoices that need to go there. Attached also, you'll find the FY22 end of year report from um, the outside auditors on um, Scammer. There were a few adjustments that had to be made. Those have been made and submitted. And I think the best news is we did um, receive the grant for the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, um, the drinking water program, so we were approved and we're waiting for more to drink. Um, we are in, uh, I'm in the process of rolling out the Massachusetts Conflict of Interest Law Training. Um, right now we rolled it out to all admin and all 12 month employees, including the trustees. Um, and then once the, um, once the teacher is ready to come back, we'll roll it out for them as well. This is managed through the Massachusetts through Massachusetts, we no longer will be managing it, so <coughs> it definitely will make it easier on us. Um, and last, um, showing the outstanding tuition invoices, the $90 has been paid, and we're waiting for one final invoice, um, one payment of $27,000. So we have all Thank you. How will the drinking water program fund us? So they will be testing the coolers. The coolers that we have to make sure there's not lead in them. The water bottle. Yeah. Awesome. And the, do we have the water bottle bottle coolers on this? So those are probably used pretty regularly by students. Great. Okay, we're going to move forward to new business superintendents and evaluation. Okay. So um, I want you to find the indicator rubric for superintendent mental health and about evaluation in your uh, papers there, please. Um, and you can see at the top uh, are the steps of the evaluation process. So um, step one, the self-assessment has been completed. Uh, that's Dr. Lincolnholder's self-assessment. Uh, step two is the analysis, goal setting, and plan development. That happened at our October 2022 Board of Trustees meeting. Step three is the implementation of the plan that is ongoing. Step four is tonight, right now, the formative ass assessment uh, at our trustees meeting. And step five will be the summative evaluation, which will be um, next May and June um, at our board of trustees meetings. So um, just to tell you a little bit about, uh, a little bit more about step four, which is tonight, the formative evaluation. Um, it, it occurs about halfway through the cycle. Uh, the superintendent will provide us with an update on the progress of his plan. Um, this isn't a written evaluation, but it's an agenda item at our meeting, as you can see. Um, it provides the opportunity for us, as well as the community, to hear about the status of the plan. And it gives us the opportunity to ask any questions or voice, voice any concerns that we might have. Um, and if there's any need to make adjustments to the goals in the plan, this would be the time to do it. So um, before Dr. Lincoln Hooker shares with you um, the, uh, where he is in the you know, progress report, 
I want to remind you of um, the standards that we'll be evaluating him on. Those are four standards. Uh, standard one is instructional leadership, that the educational leader provides the learning and growth of all students, success of all staff, by cultivating a shared vision. It makes for powerful teaching and learning the central focus of school. Next year, we will be, each one of us, will be choosing one of these ratings for Dr. Lincoln Hooker on this first standard. And you can see that um, each one, unsatisfactory, needs improvement, proficient, and exemplary. They all have descriptions there for us to guide us. Um, so I wanted you to see it now so you can kind of keep it in mind as we go through the year. Um, standard two on the next page is management and operations. So the superintendent promotes the learning and growth of all students and the success of all staff by ensuring a safe, efficient, and effective learning environment using resources <coughs> to implement appropriate curriculum staffing and scheduling. So again, um, you have the, um, the four categories there that we'll be evaluating. We'll be choosing one of those ratings for him and the clear description. They give really nice specifics in each one. Standard three is um, family and community engagement. The superintendent promotes the learning and growth of all students and the success of all staff through effective partnerships with families, community organizations, and other stakeholders that support the mission of the school and district. In addition to evaluating the superintendent on this standard, we'll also be evaluating him on his own goal that he shared with us last October. Um, so this is goal number one, that uh, the superintendent will engage in regular two-way culturally proficient communication with families and community stakeholders about student learning and performance that's provided in multiple formats and reflects understanding of and respect for different families' home languages, culture, and values. Um, and he has some specific targets there. Seven monthly newsletters by June of 2023 um, that highlight different aspects of the educational experience. And you can see at the bottom, the ratings that we'll choose are a little bit different. Exceeded, met, significant progress, some progress, or did not. And we will be providing um, some evidence or explanation for why we have chosen the ratings. Um, and then the last standard is standard four, professional culture. Uh, the superintendent promotes success for all students by nurturing and sustaining a school culture of reflective practice, high expectations, and continuous learning for staff. And again, we've got the four, um, four categories there with the specifics of what, um, uh, how we would determine the rating in each one. And then for this one also, uh, the superintendent has identified a specific goal um, demonstrates strong interpersonal written and verbal communication skills as evidenced by regular informative outreach to staff, families, and community members, the school committee in a manner that advances the work of the district, regularly seeks feedback and decision making. So by June of, of this year, he wanted eight of, the, of our meetings to include specific information that informed us of current units of instruction, projects, and topics within the academic and vocational program. Um, and again, a little bit different way than below. So that's the, um, this is what we're going to be looking at tonight, but not in a formal evaluative kind of way, but we will be doing that a year from now. This Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I'll share. <clears throat> That study way. So what you're going to see is basically uh, a reproduction of the slides I presented back in October, uh, outlining those particular indicators and, and particular goals. And then I bulleted some evidence that I, I collected over the year, uh, just kind of give you a, a sort of a snapshot of where I am at this point. Again, in this two-year process. I then at the end you're going to see uh, I did take the liberty uh, after going through this year uh, and understanding that there has to be another priority focus for me going into next year. So I have another goal I want to propose, and uh, you'll see that the language isn't you know truly uh, finalized. Uh, I'll have that in the fall. Uh, I just want to have the board's input uh, and hopefully support in that. And we will be three goals actually for next year. So again, this is just a quick review. We chose the four indicators, uh, one in each of the standards. And then I developed uh, two of the goals. Uh, this was a slide I, I shared last October. 
So as you just saw in the packet, uh, so in standard one, as the instructional leadership, we uh, picked indicator 1B. So again, this was the exact slide that we saw back in October. And uh, just reviewing some of the evidence <coughs> under the instructional leadership. So I try to cut back on some of my reporting in the board meeting because it got a little repetitive. But just sort of the, the routine that I have with the leadership team to make sure that I'm providing a quality of leadership to the administrative team so that they can turn around and be strong leaders for the staff and for the students. Uh, I do participate in two BAT meetings. Those are the building administrative team meetings. Those are actually led by Joe as the principal. Uh, so it's his meeting to run, but I am there to observe Joe, give my input, my feedback. Uh, and so I participate in those uh, again twice a week. I then hold a weekly le leadership meeting uh, over in the, in the White House. So that's a larger team. So that not only encompasses the BAT team, but it also includes facilities director, IT director, uh, food service director, adult ed uh, director, so a much larger team at that point, looking more district-wide. So I run those meetings weekly, again, providing that leadership, direction, vision, so we're all on the same page. Uh, the DLT, uh, this is sort of a, I try to do a, a consistent basis. It, it doesn't happen, to be honest. Uh, so the DLT is the district leadership team. Uh, that would be myself, Crystal, Joe, and Rebecca. Uh, as a special ed director. <clears throat> so it's, it turned into more of a, as an as-needed basis, we'll meet and talk more district level on topics that we don't necessarily have to get into at the that level or even the leadership level. Uh, but it's, it's given us an opportunity when we are able to meet to really just come together and, and sort of brainstorm and problem solve. Uh, I, I definitely want to expand more next year on the DLTs. I think, honestly, I think our schedule said Friday mornings were great, but Friday mornings in reality are, are difficult. So we want to look at that. And then you know, I sort of have this open door policy. Uh, very seldom when you see my door closed. I, I try to make myself available to all staff, uh, but specifically the administrators. So if, if there's a staffing issue, if there's student issues, I'm always consulting with Joe. I've seen uh, Tony, I work with Crystal, to anybody, uh, just making sure they're all on the same page. So um, I would hope that the administrators would feel that if the door's always open. Um, I have a proposal for you to think about um, in the next year with regard to the very last one, and that is to choose um, choose a week where you would keep a tally of the number of times that you consult with administrators, right? I think right. that could be interesting for all of us to know about how many, how many times in a day you are making yourself available, and you could just jot down if it was a staff concern or a student concern, and then that also could be a picture. So moving on to standard two, again, you already saw this in the packet. Uh, this is the management operation standard. I chose the indicator 2A, which is about the environment, and we have the language about proficiency. That would be the goal, to be proficient. So then, highlighting some of the evidence uh, for this particular year. So we completed the equity audit report. This is through City Weeks Bradley. Uh, I want to share that report with the board and sort of dive into it uh, in the fall. Uh, but it, it may give us maybe a roadmap of things to look at around human resources and, and so on and so forth. Uh, part of that contract with City Week Bradley, I had bi-weekly coaching sessions with City talking about equity and diversity and just me as a leader and uh, new ways to think about things and look at things, uh, which has been invaluable this, this past year. Part of that same contract, we had our weekly mindfulness sessions, uh, and, and that included our sort of a, a hybrid between our, our BAT and our district leadership team, sort of a, a key, key administrators who had direct, who have direct access to teachers and students. Uh, we were sort of invited into the mindfulness sessions. Uh, and there was two, two <coughs> sessions. We had, uh, the first half of it was with uh, Ted Meisner, who was the trainer, and it was really around the science and around mindfulness, and, and a lot of brain studies and how can we as individuals sort of uh, become more aware and more mindful uh, individually and, and, and some tactics, breathing tactics and med uh, meditation and so on and so forth. We then transitioned to working with City Weeks Bradley and she looked more, uh, I would say practical as far as working as an administrator. Uh, how do you work with yourself and, and refocus yourself when you're dealing with a difficult situation with a colleague, staff member, student, so on and so forth. So that, that's been great. Uh, we're hoping that that will expand into, again, future work we're studying here. <clears throat> Campus improvements, I just, a small list, okay? I, I think we just heard 
20 minutes worth of projects that, are, that Tim's overseeing. Uh, the Animal Science Building that was completed uh, this past year to, again, expand our vision around animal science. Now, all the shop lockers that are being updated uh, to have a more positive learning environment for our students and a, a safe environment, to be honest. Uh, the electronic access to a project, you don't have to expand it. For obvious reasons why we want to have that, but for school security, you know, all of the skills capital grants that uh, you know, the Joe and Melanie oversee and write, I help at the 12th hour with some you know, grammar checking. Uh, but just the ability to, to improve the campus for the teaching and learning and the, and the security purposes and just that positive environment. Uh, a few years ago, we were dealing with uh, all the faculty lounges. Unfortunately, we did them going into the pandemic, so our teachers weren't immediately able to benefit from them. But when we came back from the pandemic, we had beautiful new faculty lounges and study areas for our teachers. Again, improving the work environment for, for all staff. So I think we've done a lot here. There's a lot more to be Standard three, uh, that's the family and community engagement. This is about communication. And as I mentioned back in October, this is where I'd be focusing on, on my first goal, uh, which was the newsletter. And then uh, standard four, and we'll get into the goal. I'll dive into that in a future slide. And then standard four was my second goal. This is around professional culture and the communication specific, specifically, trying to make sure that as a board, uh, you're you know, more addressed of what's happening inside the shops, inside the academic areas, uh, of, as far as the teaching and learning, what's going on. Uh, and as a board, I think you should know that above and beyond simply what the budget is and what's happening on the community. So uh, we're trying to expand that. So that first goal, you already saw that, that's in the, the formative assessment. Uh, this was the seven monthly newsletters. Honest feedback for myself, this is down below the evidence. I was able to complete five of the seven. And to be perfectly honest, the seven is more months in the school year, uh, but we had seven because of when the goals were presented back in October. Uh, that's why the seven came to be uh, to begin with. I was able to complete five and the seven tailed off towards the end of the year. Uh, so my plan, the second bullet you probably can't read, just sort of re reflecting on uh, the, the success of the newsletter and how do I improve and make sure I think it's out there and working with Julie. Uh, my plan this summer, and actually an agenda item for next week at the Advent Planning Retreat, is that knowing that we had 10 months in the school year, we're going to identify 10 topics. Uh, part of my challenge is that we all know that we all get busy, and then, oh shoot, I have to sit down and write this newsletter. Uh, so if we have a great idea from Julie, uh, let's just brainstorm those 10 topics. And I want to work with the Advent, uh, what those topics should be. We sort of know how the school year flows, we know uh, sort of hot topic items throughout the year. So then we can be better, I can be better, better prepared uh, to make sure that that newsletter gets out. So when it does go out, it's a great resource for, for the parents and the school community. So we're working on that. The second goal, again, this was reporting to the board. <clears throat> I look specifically at the school spotlight, okay, as one piece of evidence. Uh, so four of the eight months, I wanted eight months to have some type of report to the board. Four of the eight months, we actually had school spotlights that focused around the vocational programs, uh, academics, i.e. MCAS. Um, above and beyond the school spotlight in my superintendent's report, I have reported out on what's happening in some of the shops and uh, some of my business into the shop areas. I, I want to expand more on the academic side. Um, so again, part of my idea for next week when we have a retreat is to, we know that we have board meetings every month. So rather than during the agenda planning meeting, trying to quickly identify who we want to spotlight for the school spotlight. Uh, why can't we sort of map this out uh, during the summertime so we'll have a better idea throughout the year. We already know uh, what programs we're going to uh, showcase. We can already begin to talk to those programs so they can be better prepared and maybe, maybe have a better presentation for you as a board. Uh, so that, that's already on the agenda for next week at the end of the retreat. And then a slight shift, and this is great feedback uh, from Dr. Spencer Robinson. When it comes to my report, uh, Honestly, you probably get very bored because a lot of my report is simply what I was doing, different meetings and things I've been at. And we're going to try to pull away from some of that. And I want to have more of a focus on what is happening on campus as far as the teaching. And That's why we're all here. So you're going to begin to see a shift in, in the format of my, of my report. And lastly, this is the proposing the third goal. <clears throat> and this is just my self-reflection, okay? And, and seeing what my job is day in and day out. And um, about working with Crystal, and uh, I'm going to jump to the goal. 
Okay. And you know, what kind of brainstorming the words I could worsen a bit a little bit. Um, I try to tie it back into when, when I review the entire rubric published by the Department of Ed. I think what I'm about to share with you probably falls under uh, standard two, which is management and operations, it's indicator two B, which is human resources management and development. Okay. We could argue where it fits, okay? And uh, so goal three, my hope, <clears throat> according to the department, is implementing a cohesive approach to recruitment and hiring across the district, uses data to identify priority areas of need and anticipate vacancies, and involves stakeholders in the selection of school and district leaders. As a result, consistently identifies and hires effective administrators and educators who share the district's mission and increasingly reflect the diversity and backgrounds and identities across the Commonwealth to meet all students' needs. Supports principals to do the same. That's the language from Desi. That's not my language. Okay, so again, this it doesn't fit perfectly what I'm about to present to you. Uh, so we can shift that. You'll spot, you may see a modification in the fall. But the concept is, and that's the last bullet, by June of next year, what I want to do is work with the, the policy subcommittee of the board. I want to work with the school administrators to review, develop, and update our policies and procedures around hiring, around retention, and employment bene uh, benefits to better support all of our employees. Uh, and I have a countless list of examples of, uh, we have an issue within one job category, it comes to Crystal, it comes to Anne Marie, it comes to me, and I make a decision. Well, that one decision then impacts the next job category, which then impacts the, ne the next job category. So there's a lot of that. I feel like I'm chasing my tail, to be perfectly honest, a lot of times. Um, always asking Crystal, what did I say last time? Okay. So I want to make it more standardized uh, and more consistent. Another issue that we have many times is the relationship or lack thereof of uh, when do we belong to the city and when do we not belong to the city. And when it comes to uh, employment benefits and whatnot. So if I'm a particular job category, what benefits do I get? Well, are you a city employee or not? And it's a nightmare. And the board does have a policy. We found this out during one of our examples. Um, the board does have a policy that says that a Smith vocational employee who is non-representative, so not part of the union, if there's nothing specified specific for Smith vocational, then that employee should be sort of looked at as a counterpart within the city. As an example, an administrative assistant. There is no uh, bargaining agreement for the administrative assistant here with Smith. Uh, so, if we have an issue around employment benefits or expectations for administrative assistance, we're supposed to look at NPS and see what does NPS administrative assistance have or administrative assistance at the city. Well, when NACE updates their contract, it's on us to try to review the NACE contracts, which is time consuming. Or oftentimes, if it's a city issue, if the city updates their policy, you would not be aware of it. Now, all of a sudden, we have city employees have a new benefit, and our employees here don't have any benefit. And it's a nightmare for Crystal and Amory. So we're always, again, chasing our tails through this team. I want to get away from that. Uh, we are Smith Vocational. We are our, our own school district. We've talked about that as a vision and as a board. So my hope is just policy by policy or, or issue by issue, begin to put it into black and white. Because at the end of the day, I, I, I say this to anybody, I love the school. Someday I'm going to either retire or something tragic will happen. Same thing's going to happen to Crystal. We move on. And I want to make sure that the school stands in, in a consistent long term. So um, anyways, I'm talking a lot. But I just I put this out there because honestly, this is becoming a bigger issue, I feel, at my level, within the business office level. I just want to have more consistency, more transparency. So then all staff, no matter who you are, you know what you're getting and why and when we can stay in the Smith and we don't have to sort of hide behind NPS or hide behind the city. It gets more complicated than we do that. Let's make our own policies. So thoughts, questions? Well, I think you're very well prepared, Amy. I really appreciate you showing that comments that you're going forward to help you. I think are going to do nothing but <clears throat> move us forward for the next uh, 12 month period and uh, it gets better and stronger. And I think what happens is, is with us being leaders, people that are following want to see us there. And if you're showing it this way and you're touching it, that you're suggesting, 
then not only will be seeing it, but feeling it. So I congratulate both. Thank you. This makes a lot of sense, and I really like the idea of having some organizational coherence around policy. It just makes good sense, it does. and what a great legacy. You know, to, with, with the transparency, everybody understands it. So, yeah, it, it, it can be done. Thank you. So does anyone else have any um, more input related to any of the goals um, in terms of this formative? It's a, it's a more informal kind of um, part of the process right now. Any feedback we want to give Dr. Lippenhofer in terms of the newsletter, in terms of um, bringing uh, education to the trustees meetings, the vocational and academic education programs here? Oh, I think she's clear in the goals. And you spelled them out during the presentation, so I think we're covered. You feel like yes, definitely. Rick, do you want to? Um, my comment is I like uh, what Dr. Andy said about when he does his presentation, he focuses on him, and maybe he needs to focus more on what is going on and how he is leading that charge. I thought that was very well thoughtful. Very thoughtful. <laughs> you know what I mean. Thank you. Thank you. And I love the newsletter. I think it's a fantastic resource. I love the platform that you used. I love the content. I love the look. Um, I just thought it was dynamite for our families especially, but anyone connected to the school community. Thank you. I'm drawing a blank on the newsletter. Where does it go? Is it mailed to the... Electronically sent out. Electronically sent out. I don't believe I've ever gotten one. I will forward you a copy. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, move forward. <clears throat> We have a motion and a second to approve payment of the FY23 invoices listed in the financial report. So second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a motion and a second to approve for discussion and possible action, a vote to move to an electronic process for the approval of warrants. So moved. Uh, second, and further discussion, please. Yep, you can start. No, I can start, like to know Crystal as well. So as a board, you're probably well aware of the warrant process that we have right now. You can yep. text or call or whatever to say, please come in and sign the warrants I'm in the White House. <clears throat> the concerns that we have in, in the central office uh, is multifaceted. One is the concern around just the continuing of the operation of the school, you get the warrant signed and processed so we can get things ordered and purchased. Uh, the second concern is, is out of respect for the board. All of you are busy professionals. Uh, many of you are working and have other commitments and family and so on and so forth. So to get you to come in and sign sometimes can be mm -hmm. an undue burden on you as a board member. So the, the, the idea is can we move back to what we had during the pandemic, which would be an electronic process where uh, there would be an email out. One example I have is with the contracts. As you know, if the contract that we want to push out, I'll send it to all of you as a board member, all the documentation, and then I ask if you have any issue with it to please respond to me individually. If there's no negative feedback, we move on and we process the contract. If not, we bring it to the board. So a similar model could be an email <coughs> to the board to say, you know, we have this warrant, and the fine detail you have to iron out as a board. Uh, but if, it, if we move to that, uh, that electronic model where we have somebody identified or people identified or whatever that process looks like, we could actually process the warrants in a more timely fashion. Uh, and then all the materials still are to be available during the board meeting. So there's still that transparency. And uh, the idea came from, honestly, besides the two issues that we brought up, uh, but NPS does this already. So the, the Northampton School Committee already has this, this model in place. Um, so that's sort of the, the idea behind it. Uh, but the if you're in favor of it, then how do we make this happen? There's, there's nuances that we can talk about. Uh, whether it's an individual that's identified, if there's people identified, if it goes to all of you and first come, first service are responding, that's up to the board. Uh, but we wanted to share the concept and have you have a discussion about it. 
Crystal, any other anything else to add to it? No, if you would like, um, I do have a copy of the cover sheet. So it's it's similar to what I include on the batch. Um, it says, um, on my report, it says warrants June 9th. And it shows the warrant number, the amount, uh, excuse me, the date of the warrant, the amount of invoices processed, and the amount. So that would actually go on the sheet that I'm sending out. And I will then include the alphabetized listing of each batch. So whomever is reviewing it will be able to look at the warrant. Um, Look at that and let me know if there are any questions. Um, and then if you don't, you certainly can just send an email to the Then at the board meeting, I will provide copies of everything that was sent out for any member that for the board. It makes a lot of sense to me. And uh, I know in our agenda setting meeting, we talked about a few options for uh, who would sign the warrants, because right now it's two of us signing them, right? And I think for NPS, it's also it's one signer with one um, alternate, right? So we could go that route. So one person signs, and then there's one al one alternate. Another route could be to send it out to there's five of us, right? We're on trustees, so send it out to the send the warrants out to the five of us, and it would be the first we only one. We only, so the first one to reply to say they approve it it's all set. So then people wouldn't have to be worried, an advantage of that is people wouldn't have to be worried about checking their email all the time because uh, between the five of us, we'd see, you know, one of us would see the warrant. We, we all receive them, we can see them, any one of us authorized to do that. I personally would like to talk about this and I, uh, I always try to make myself available to come over and sign. Uh, it's almost like a endeavor, okay? Here we uh, I mean, devil will back me up that I'm, I'm over here. I'm getting it done. Uh, I think as our being elected members of the trustees by the citizens of the city of Northampton, we have a fiduciary duty to come in and do our job that we're being paid for, and that's to look at the warrants, sign the warrants and present the warrants. I do not like or uh, to have just a pushable button and, and having this stuff going on. And especially if you're going to send copies that are really private information of our vendors coming out over through email and if something hiccups and it goes to the wrong place, they wouldn't want it out there and I don't think I want it out there. Uh, I know you're trying to expedite your job to make it easier as far as your, your office, but myself personally, as uh, part of the longest members of the trustees, is uh, I, I don't like it. I'd rather just keep the way it is and go back and uh, sign it. Now, I understand on the contracts when we have a, uh, we get a grant and then we're processing the grant, and as the parts come in, or the pieces come in, you send out the contract, and then we review it, and we, you know, send you a note or send Andy a note saying, okay, okay. Uh, I understand that's a review process. During the COVID, because of a pandemic, we had to adjust and adapt because we had pandemic, and again, that was because we couldn't be in person. So that was a, a medical situation. That was not just to make it easier or... Uh, so uh, business-wise, as far as us being trustees of the school, I feel that we're being paid to do our job to do business. And part of that is going in and signing warrants. And even if there's any questions that come up, we address with them when we're right young. So that's my position. Uh, we, we put it to a vote here, and uh, everybody can vote the way they want to do it. But that's just my personal feeling. Question. So what would we get electronically? You would receive one sheet of paper that, again, is similar to this right here, where it shows the warrant, shows the batch number, and then attached to that would be it has the vendor's name 
and the amount in the account number. So then what we're missing from what we have now is the backup slips. The actual invoices, correct. I'd like to see those. Uh, when I come in to sign a warrant, I sit down and I like to see what's going on just to be better informed, in a sense. Um, so I like the idea of electronically expediting things because I will never sign another warrant again if it's the system in place now because of my work schedule. Um, I have come in early one day to meet Deb. She was kind enough to meet me early. Uh, I guess people were away and it wasn't getting signed. And I can do that, but that's not always seems to be an option. Um, so yeah, this is uh, a little bit of a conundrum or what's the word I'm looking for. I have a couple of points of clarification. Um, so, what is the difference between what's on that sheet and what it, the actual invoice? So this just this just tells you the amount. It doesn't give you any background. It doesn't give but you it, any details. Does it tell? Does it say the name of the vendor? Yes, it right. is. So big, can you read us an example? Sure. Big Y Foods. Yep. And then um, these throw. numbers. It has the purchase order. Yep. Um, the voucher is what news our accounting system um, gives it as. as with the batch, yep. the amount and the account number right here, yep. and over to the right shows you what's remaining on the PO. Okay. And then it has the address. Right so there. what is missing for you? Oh, well, we got it. Oh, the, the, the actual slip, the slip, the receipt, oh. the invoice. So you look at every single. Yeah, I do. How often I, do you come in? That's a good point. I was coming in pretty regularly when my schedule was different mm -hmm. and I had flexibility, I don't have that flexibility to be able to come in the way I could right. before. I don't either. Okay. Would we so, still have access to those, could we have access to those slips? Like could... That like, would be quite a bit of work. But I'm thinking of a lot of paper. <laughs> but no, what I'm thinking of is like if you brought them to a board meeting. If Rick wanted to look through and see what the... What well, the they, they, was. That, then that's after the fact. You want it in so, that moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're paying for something, yeah, you want to know you're paying for it. Um, another point of clarification, um, Mike said that it would be, it's private information, but my understanding is because we're a public organism, that everything is public, all of that is public. So anybody could come and see those invoices. You can actually go online and see all the vendors and what's paid. Okay. From the same. So it... Hmm. How, can you tell us how it, um, I, you know, I see our, our role, at least my role, is, is facilitating more work. So can you tell us a little bit about, more about how this helps you in your role? Sure. When the, once the batches are signed, um, then it goes down to the auditor's office. The auditors have to review the batches as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not only Kate entering them, me or one of my staff reviewing to make sure that everything's there. Then again, it goes to the auditor's office for review before it go, they get, give the approval to the treasurer's office. Those checks are only cut on Fridays. So if we miss, so we have to get the warrant down there a week mm -hmm. ahead. If we miss that, then the vendor's waiting another week. So depending on how long it, um, the invoice waited for the department head to come in and sign, mm -hmm. sometimes we're paying vendors well over 30 days. So um, my, one of my goals was to make sure that we um, paid our vendors quickly. So you're thinking um, of the vendors? Thinking of the vendors, because if once you get past the net 45 or longer, they might put us on a, you know, they will no longer accept purchase orders. And as you know, we don't have a credit card. We can't prepay for anything with a credit card anyway. But it just puts, it ties our hands. And um, when I came here, that was one of the things that just, really bothered me because we had vendors that were waiting for payment. Gotcha. So this would speak things up the way. I was looking at all of the invoices now. No. I, like we had that training for MASC that says know what you're signing for. I, I look through enough times for me mm -hmm. to feel like, okay, you know, 
I'm trusting them to do their job. Well, yeah, I, it wasn't more or that sort of thing. It was just, I'm just kind of more. This is thing. not a trust issue at all with me, and it's not a trust issue at all. No. What it is is that, again, when I'm talking to a constituent and they talk about how do you do, what do you do about doing more, what do you do, they want to know. And they question when you run a process and they want to know what your duties are. And I explained the whole process to them. And what, uh, when, when this review just came out in regards to how many hours we spend being a trustee in regards to any advances that may come in in the next election, uh, they want to know how many hours I spent. I spent a lot of hours. And I justify in regards to part of those hours are coming over and signing warrants and reviewing them and looking at the slips. They feel trustworthy to me as the administrator that I'm looking at them and that I'm monitoring them. Even though you guys do a great job, never been a hiccup. No flashback from, you know, City Hall drives you crazy because of the way they do things. But internally here at the school, it's fantastic. I have no issue with that at all. But in regards to my job and my responsibility to the voter that elected me to sit in this chair, I feel responsible to coming in and signing up in the office. That's I my see, position. I see this as being even more accountable to the city because there will be five of us now seeing all of the warrants with all of the bills that are being paid instead of just the two people who happen to come the, in the, to sign the three people that sign are us. Nobody else sitting at this table and blew the mayor she was here. She doesn't sign warrants. She has she? No. I would no. no. We've never no, used it. No, I wouldn't ask the city to sign warrants. But she could sign them if we needed her. She, she could. She but could, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So but that's not her position. So I wouldn't send I wouldn't send it to five trustees. The, we're the board. We're the elected officials. But they're they're but they don't sign them, is what I'm telling you. But they're every bit as much of the board as we are. They are, but they're ex officio. It does, but that just means by virtue of the office. They're voting well, members of the board. They have well, Yeah, the there's, <laughs> that's, yeah. I agree with that. that. That is a true statement, but I also agree with Mr. Mike in the sense that we're the ones really signing we're them, the and ones they're ones the ex officios aren't. Um, and, and it is not a trust thing for me at all. It's more of a curiosity thing to, I like to see what's what's going on. It makes I feel more part of the process if I know where the money's being spent, as just opposed to X number of dollars to X Y Z vendor type of thing. I just but I know Rick, you questioned when we were doing the some of the grant stuff, and then there was a change order for twenty five thousand dollars, and you went ballistic saying, "What the hell?" Right. Who authorized this? How did this happen? Who dropped that, the ball? That was part of it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that took days to sort that out in regards to who dropped the ball. And it was a vendor that dropped the ball according to the work over at Culinary. And if we didn't view that and, and you didn't trigger it, even though we had to pay for it, well, that, 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 that the actually ball. was an email. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. But so. it wasn't him coming in here. And no, but it was an email, but he. He turned so around and found uh, and, yeah. and questioned. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And we'll come in the meantime. Yeah. And Rick, I'm hearing you say you won't be able to come in anymore and look at Unless them. somebody meets me early. <laughs> Which, do we want to do that? <laughs> I don't have a problem with it. When, when school's in session, what time do you come in? I mean, I'm here at 6.30. But her hours are not till 7. So theoretically, she shouldn't be here till 7. Okay. Understood. And I don't get back into town till four o'clock. Um, so this this is I'm kind of taken out of the the loop in a sense, unfortunately. Um, so I like the idea of the electronic, but uh, I'm 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 you know teetering here, obviously. Should we go? Sure. Is there any more so discussion? we have a. Is there any other further discussion? Can we do a, a, a 
Can you pull it? On the roll call vote? A roll call vote. Michael Kaley? No. Dr. Spencer Robinson? Yes. Mr. Quadro? No. item we have a motion and a second to approve the surplus for scrap from the agricultural department of broken jack shelves lawnmower blades and a draft horse wooden poster from criminal justice we have a red pedal cart so moved second any further discussion no all in favor aye thank you we have a motion and a second to approve the surplus for resale a double convection oven from culinary arts. So moved. Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. They have a motion, a second to approve for discussion, possible action to support the Thrive Act Bill number 246 slash H495 to eliminate the MCAS graduation requirement. So moved. Second. Discussion? Yes. So <laughs> I bet there is. <laughs> uh, this comes from the um, newspaper, actually, the Daily Hampshire Gazette, uh, uh, um, had a story on the Northampton School Committee uh, approving this resolution. Um, the, the, there is these bills. Um, there are two bills here. One is a Senate bill, 246, and the other is a House bill, 495. Um, Senator Joe Comerford is the person who presented the Thrive Act um, to the Senate, and it has lots of folks who have signed on to it. It's sponsored by lots of different organizations, and um, it does a couple different things. It does, it does a, a fair amount, but it's the, the aim is to eliminate uncast as a graduation requirement, establish a commission to look at some other way of determining competency for graduation that districts would be in charge of, um, and to not use um, MCAS to uh, take over uh, district, underperforming districts in the state. So um, I will read through the resolution, and um, I think I should read through to the Well, I think if everybody's been copied. Yeah. Or you, you gave it a general overview. Do we need to read it through for the record or not? Okay. So this essentially says that the high quality public employment education is a guaranteed right. We want to support students. We want to teach them to be critical thinkers, engaged citizens. The high stakes standardized testing has undermined some of the important goals. Um, certainly I think that's true in the vocation of um, using MCAS as a high school graduation has prevented or delayed some students from earning a diploma. Um, so let it be resolved that we urge the state legislature to pass the Thrive Act um, and the use of MCAS as a, a graduation requirement and um, develop an alternative to MCAS. So that is the resolution that I am asking all of you to support. I support. Any, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, future business. August 15th, 23, building committee meeting at 3. August 15th, 23, regular board of trustees meeting at 5. September 19th, building committee. September 19th, regular board. September 30th, the general advisory committee meeting at the Oliver Smith Restaurant at 7 a.m. Uh, October 17, 23, Building Committee meeting, October 17, Regular Board of Trustees meeting at 5 o'clock. And October 25th, the Program Advisory Committee meetings meet, meeting at 
6 p.m. at the cafeteria. Can I ask a uh, Rick a question? Um, are you still interested, Rick, in going to the general advisory? Committee? I was just going to bring that up. I just looked up what day of the week that is. Okay. Yes, I do. I will make. I will go in late that day. I wish to be part of that. So can we make sure that it will be posted? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So as our newest member of the board, you have a big job right here. And right now, and I'm going to ask you if you would have a motion in a second to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want her to make the motion? Yeah. Make the motion. What? Okay, what? motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. 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 Aye.